I can't imagine my life without the botanical gardens. This is a treasure. This is a jewel of, in Western New York that we've had for 120 years. Hi, I'm Tafik Mohammed, and I'm here at the Buffalo and Erie County Botanical Gardens. This is a really special place. This place has a rich history going back more than 120 years. When Buffalo was the seventh largest city in the country, it was a major hub for shipping and commerce, and even played a huge role in the Industrial Revolution. The population was growing, and city leaders were busy improving the quality of life for its citizens. That's where this story begins. Folks who had been living on the waterfront, moving to the uh, First Ward, the Valley, and then into South Buffalo proper, uh, they were concerned because they didn't have a park as other parts of the city had. Frederick Law Olmsted, of course, had developed the park system in Buffalo. And in the late 1880s, the citizens of the area in the South really wanted a park. And of course, parks were very important in those days. They didn't have uh, shopping malls or theaters to go to. People on Sundays, usually their only day off, was an opportunity for them to gather with family and go to the park. But there were none here in South Buffalo. Olmsted returned with grand designs for a massive 1,200 acre park, which wasn't at all what the city envisioned the leaders in the city of Buffalo rejected that 1,200 acre park and told them, look, you can build a park, you can design an arboretum, be known as South Park, but it will only be 156 acres. The city also required that Olmsted include a conservatory in the design. These botanical glass houses were built in major cities. They were a testament to progress and promoted the field of botany. Getting the conservatory to come in was another feature to attract people. And so they asked Frederick Law Olmsted to go back and redesign the park. He wasn't overly pleased with this, um, but he relinquished the duty, really, I believe, to his son, Olmsted Jr., and the conservatory was indeed a part of it. Each of the parks had features, but this one was going to be outstanding. The city commissioned Lord and Burnham to design the structure, and uh, they uh, modeled it after the Crystal Palace, which is in the Kew Gardens in London, England. This new conservatory would be home to thousands of plant species, not native to Western New York, but from all around the world. Before construction could even begin, John F. Cowell was named his first director. He traveled around the Western Hemisphere, sailed down the Caribbean into a Central America, identified plants, and then had to bring them back and keep them alive. And the story goes that he brought them back in Edwardian cases, large glass cases with soil and moisture, and the plants survived, and he brought them back to this, uh, this country. The conservatory opened in 1900, and it would have an early chance to shine a year later during the Pan American Exposition, a World's Fair that highlighted the cultural achievements and technological advancements of the 19th century. It brought millions of visitors to Buffalo. Thousands and thousands of people visited the conservatory, and if all I could afford was a trolley ride to South Park, well, that was a whole new world for them. You could just imagine what it was like for people being on streetcars or even their carriages, the women in their long dresses and the guys in their top hats coming out. It must have been just an incredible experience to come and see all these plants from around the world. In the early years, you could find more than 7,000 different species of plants inside the conservatory, and more than 50,000 hardwooded plants in the growing arboretum. You couldn't hop on a plane, you couldn't turn on the TV or you know, your computer to see what these plants look like. They would have some literature, but there's a difference between looking at a still picture 
versus being there in person and seeing the plant and seeing the blooms on the plants and how different they are. Um, even today, people come in and are amazed at some of the plants we have and people don't realize gee, this is how a banana grows, or this is what a chocolate pod looks like. Unfortunately, the unexpected death of director John Cowell in 1915, well, it would mark the beginning of several difficult years. Not only had we lost our, our, our leader, the, but the conditions were deteriorating. According to the accountant's records, they were replacing panes of glass in the conservatory at a rate of 200 per year. Lord and Burnham were the preeminent greenhouse designers in the United States at the time, and they designed a structure that was Victorian style. And part of the problem was the houses were shaped like this, and the weight of the snow pushed down and caused serious damage. And this conservatory was in a climate that was hot and humid on the inside, and ice cold on the outside, plus the smoke from the smokestacks was very corrosive. At this point, the conservatory wasn't even 30 years old, but it was in desperate need of repair. Even the word demolition was being thrown around. Luckily, this is just the beginning of the story. Help in the form of federal funds was just around the corner and would save the conservatory. <laughs> 